okay uh, good afternoon everybody uh, so it's my pleasure to uh, moderate this webinar uh, titled possible do's and don'ts for publishing research papers in high impact journals let me admit it first this is my first uh, uh, webinar on go to webinar uh, portal which i am uh, organizing as a moderator i've attended many such webinar and uh, my sincere thanks to uh, first of all pavan ji uh, who assisted me with this and then uh, our honorable vice chancellor dr isra mantri who gave me training today in the morning for around 10 minutes and she has agreed to uh, further assist me if i get stuck up somewhere uh, on technical ground so she is uh, one of the organizers for this webinar as well so thank you so much dr archana okay coming back to the point of the webinar so uh, I already shared with you what the title of the webinar and we do have six esteemed panelists and uh, i would introduce them uh, Uh, one by one, Dr. Harmeet Kaur, uh, whom all of you know that she is the dean of uh, a nursing college. But besides that, I do have a lot of respect for her because uh, she did her post doctorate very recently from John Hopkins University. Now, why this John Hopkins norm name is very very important? Uh, I'm very sure if many of you might be uh, listening to uh, COVID-19 news nowadays, you might be know knowing that how this. Uh, university has been um, uh, the data quoted by this university or the figures quoted by this university are are, are uh, uh, considered very very seriously by the research community scientific community medical community across the world so professor harmeet spent good time over there uh, uh, to learn many of the nuances of research over there so i do have a lot of respect for her uh, dr pankaj kumar is our second panelist uh, i have written here as well in the introduction that he is two time awardee for best researcher of the university and in the last awards function organized on 2019 uh, uh, on 15th february 2020 for the year 2019 calendar year um, uh, he he won the uh, award for the best cited researcher of the university so he had got maximum citations and next dr jaitik singh uh, he had to be on the panel because he was awarded very recently the award for best researcher of for the year 2019 Dr. Namrata Sandhu, uh, uh, we really wanted a kind of diverse panel uh, where it should not so happen that only my thoughts are uh, presented over there, but wanted an arrangement so that we do have people from diverse backgrounds. And Dr. Uh, Namrata Sandhu, in business school, has been doing some exceptionally uh, high quality of research, and that I can vouch for because when all these uh, research papers come to my office for allocation of UIN, and I. i try to analyze the papers uh, quality of papers so dr namrata sandhu stands very very high in the research on uh, in the business studies field so that is why she had to be on the panelist uh, next uh, omkar bedi a young researcher and uh, he was awarded the uh, best researcher award for for the pharmacy school in year 2019 uh, a recently organized function and uh, he is not yet phd but then he had to be there on the panel because Uh, when uh, when we were framing the questions or when we were thinking that how this uh, webinar should be organized i was really looking for a young person with whom there may be uh, the people may connect they may feel connected because we are a young university our average research group average age of the uh, faculty members also might not be more than 30 years or so so but uh, we we do have some inhibition some inner reluctance that perhaps research is a very very difficult thing so we do have one person on panel who is young but who who was who won the best research award from the pharmacy school in which otherwise a lot of research work is happening is now to be the best in those 30 or 40 odd faculty members in pharmacy school that was definitely a creditable achievement so omkar bedi is here uh, next uh, chef didar singh uh, on the panel uh, he he comes from a field otherwise which is known that perhaps uh, there is nothing much research which can happen in the uh, field of uh, hospitality and same kind of uh, comments same kind of uh, statements we keep on hearing about other fields like as arts or uh, animation or um, uh, or other humanities field that research work is not possible over there but this gentleman chef didar singh has proved uh, everybody wrong in that front and he has got good number of publications in last uh, calendar year being from hospitality school as a but still he has been able to have very very good number of publication so so we we try to have the panel as diverse as possible and uh, i'm very sure uh, 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 audience will find it interesting uh, and the objective with which we want to have this uh, webinars that 
objective will be ultimately uh, resolved. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 see, on the similar kind of topic, I had delivered earlier a, uh, a lecture in the Pere Hall on, uh, I remember, 25th May 2019. And the title was uh, that enhance the count and quality of your research papers. Now, uh, see, that, that particular topic was very, very contemporary, very relevant at that time when we were talking month of May. Uh, when when university on an average was having around say uh, approximately 100 research paper or so every year but uh, now last year in 2019 calendar year with carrot and stick policy with incentives in place whatsoever is the reason with motivation coming in from the management uh, 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 Ma Mohit sir, Dr. Archana uh, means with all the um, uh, members roping in their effort for for enhancing the uh, cause of research. We had around 375 research papers in 2019. And I'm very glad to inform everybody as well. I see there are around 245 uh, uh, attendees as of now. Very glad to inform all of you that we are in, uh, today we are talking on 10th of June. And the count of research publications for university as of now is also for this calendar year, it is around 200 or so. So we are doing well on the count. But then count only uh, perhaps is not good now is uh, is not going to take us as a university if we want to become mit or harvard or stanford of tomorrow or uh, say 10 years down the line 20 years down the line then we definitely need to keep the quality of publications coming from this university very very seriously in mind so hence this topic has been devised accordingly uh, see the structure of this webinar is going to be see i have named it like 10 plus 8 formula 10 tips to write an impactful research paper and then eight useful websites for finding the right journals. Now, how this 18 websites have made way into my webinar is or into this presentation is that uh, as many of you might be knowing that there was a Google form link which was shared and we had got almost 167 questions on that webinar, on that Google form, sorry, 167 questions. So uh, when thoroughly those questions were looked into, I could find that there are many questions with there which is a lot of uh, common thing and a lot of questions then are, are going to be answered by the panelist as well. So I'm very sure in the last in the next say uh, 10, 15 odd minutes which I would be speaking and then later on we'll be having one to one question answer round with the panelist as well. Uh, you'll be finding the answers of many of those questions which are asked against the uh, Google form. So here we go. Uh, before that, uh, let me share with you uh, this this particular Facebook post has been put up by uh, uh, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma. I don't know how many of you know him. He is the secretary for Department of Science and Technology. Very very coveted post, and he put up put this particular message on his Facebook profile two days back, as you can see it from here, 22 hours back. Today in the morning only, I took the screenshot uh, that he says. Uh, while it takes and i quote him while it takes plenty time effort and money to complete a scientific work commensurate care is often not exercised in communicating it effective communication can often see a mediocre paper being accepted in a better journal and a good work not being rejected in a good journal in the final analysis and please listen this thing very carefully in the final analysis good writing is all about getting attention of our peers no matter which journal effective writing is the key save for the handful of papers that announce real breakthroughs so if the secretary of dst is making the statement that whatsoever however a uh, good researcher we are but if we are not able to present our research correctly we are not able to write our research effectively which a reader can't appreciate which your peer scientific community can't appreciate then the whole effort goes for it all. So writing the research, presenting the research, I personally feel is very, very important. And hence these 10 tips. Uh, there, is, there was a lot of questions asked about this particular thing, uh, H-index, impact factor, SGR rank, where we should focus on high H-index journal or impact factor or SGR rank, etc. See, the basic understanding is all these parameters have been uh, developed to uh, to basically uh, see that how impactful, what impact your research is leaving on the scientific community. Uh, and ultimately, the measure 
the one parameter which can which can find out that how impactful your research is that is how many times your research articles have been cited there were some questions like that uh, if an article has been downloaded say 500 number of times but it has been cited say only two number of times is it considered to be good research or not uh, yes it would be a good research but only issue here is we don't have any scientific parameter as of now at least not in my knowledge uh, which can which can find out that uh, or which one single parameter that which can establish that uh, this many number of times these articles have been downloaded downloading is different but how many those how many times those articles have been actually used for enhancing the research for further research so that comes through citations only so all these parameters h index impact factor sgr rank etc everything is related to how many times a research article written by you has been cited so i would not be going about the details of this particular parameters here in this webinar because we have discussed it i remember i have discussed it at these many platforms in the university during many of the sessions earlier and if somebody is still not clear about that so there is a i have given a link here of the youtube link which is uh, our university chitkara show channel so i had developed this video some time back and you can go through this video and and that this video provides a lot of clarity if somebody is still confused about these parameters h index impact factor so and 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 uh, what i will be doing is uh, uh, is i'll be uh, sharing this ppt with all of you later so that you can time and again have a look at it understand it in case there are some questions again you can always come back to us come back to office of dean search come back to me come back to any of the panelists uh, because all of them have done exceedingly good uh, research work in the uh, last few years then there is a general question which was again asked that this is what is scopus and sci battle see scopus and sci uh, let us set the score straight both are indexing agencies only issue here is uh, the person who publishes paper in a sci index journal he 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 holds his scholar even higher than the other person who published a paper in a scopus index journal and the reason for the same is this sci list is even refined than the scopus index journal list as a refined in the sense if in scopus if you see there are around 35000 entities which are indexed when i say entities it means it is uh, book writers it is uh, journals it is uh, conferences as well conference proceedings as well while in sci which is maintained by web of science uh, there are around 17000 odd journals so so almost so it means the uh, uh, the list of sci journal is more trimmed more refined and only uh, high quality journals make it to the list of sci index journals otherwise Uh, when it comes on to norms of the regulatory whether these are nac norms or ugc norms or even our university norms as well if one publishes article even in a scopus index journal as well so he becomes eligible for all the incentives all all means means he draws quite a good amount of respect for even scopus index journal as well so here we go with the 10 tips first of all see and these 10 tips are all about 10 different sections of any research paper we start with title and title we need to remember two formulas one is abc and de of writing title abc is the title has to be accurate title has to be brief and title has to be clear def means it should be declarative means whatsoever is your major finding that should be highlighted in the title e is engaging if you have used some state of the art or novel technique so that should be highlighted and focusing any application or area where this research is going to benefit so that should be highlighted in um, uh, title of the paper usually the question is how may how long the title should be 5 words 10 words 15 words 20 words so the answer uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge should be between 10 to 15 words so you need to frame the title in such a way in those 10 to 15 words so that all these a b c d e f is taken care of please remember this thing abc whenever you when you uh, uh, write the title of any research paper ask yourself whether your title is fitting in this formula abc def or not if it is it is fitting in you have written a good title for that research paper next uh, comes in the authors and affiliations see uh, usually uh, we have uh, put up the guidelines for the same on uin portal also that what are the do's and don'ts for writing the author and affiliations or uh, Of, uh, for the authors so here we say uh, in the university we say the name of the institute has to be written likewise if there is a faculty from engineering department any of the engineering department 
whether he's from CSC or ECE or mechanical or uh, then uh, the name of this school has to be written like Chitkara University Institute of Engineering and Technology. If there is a faculty from a business school, then the name of the school has to be written as Chitkara Business School. Now, if a faculty is from the pharmacy department, whatsoever department does he come from, from the pharmacy, but he should be writing at Chitkara College of Pharmacy. So this is how the affiliation is supposed to be written. And there have been discussions earlier that somebody writes doctor, uh, doctor so and so, somebody writes professor so and so. Usually, see, uh, uh, it has been observed that most of the high repute, highly reputed journals don't discourage, uh, don't sorry, encourage writing these salutations and designations. If it is Rajneesh Sharma, so it's Rajneesh Sharma only. Rajneesh Sharma, Chakara University Institute of Engineering and Technology. We do permission from Archana ma'am. So she is not, she should not be writing Archana Mantri, Vice Chancellor, Chakara University, Punjab. She should simply Archana Mantri, then whatsoever uh, uh, is the name of the institute. This is how it should be written. Or if it is Dr. Sandeer Sharma, it's not written like Professor Dr. Sandeer Sharma, Dean Chitkara Business School. All those things do not matter in the research community. It should be written, simply written as Sandeer Sharma, Chitkara Business School, Chitkara University, Punjab, India. Why it is important to write Punjab? And why it is important to write India? Because uh, Punjab government keeps on asking us, give us the data that how many research papers uh, your university has published. And if the Punjab is not mentioned over there, perhaps we will not be able to forward that your particular research paper to Punjab government. And similarly, if India is not written, the global agencies who are maintaining all the research credentials country-wise, so our country will miss, miss one of your papers. So all those details should be there. And all these guidelines have been provided in detail on um, on UIN portal. So my request to all uh, Chitkara uh, faculty that they must go through these guidelines available on UIN portal while mentioning the affiliations as well. Uh, tip number three, it is writing the abstract. Simply remember these five questions. Why did you do it? What did you do? How did you do it? What did you find out? And what does that mean? I, I can tell you from my experience in last one year or so, our research group has maybe written around 20 odd research papers. And this now, this five question technique has, has gone into our genes. We know that when an abstract is supposed to be written, we just write down the answer of these five questions. Try it out. Whosoever is, remains confused while writing the abstract of a question, uh, abstract of a research paper, just try it out. Just answer these five questions. And, and further I can refine it, that for every question you are not supposed to write more than two sentences. So five question, 10 sentences, not more than 200 words. That's the ideal abstract. Uh, here is an example of uh, abstract, good abstract as well, but I will skip it in the interest of time, but I will still retain this slide when I come share these slides with you later. Uh, writing introduction. So after abstract, obviously it comes on to introduction between, there are keywords as well, but I'm not spending time on that. So the introduction, again, there is a formula, like there is a formula for writing the title, A, B, C, D, E, F, there is a formula for writing introduction as well. And the formula is MRCIO. Means you are supposed to write the motivation for carrying on that particular research. You are supposed to write the research question. You are supposed to write about the what contribution your research has made. What are the implications of this research? And how last paragraph, what four sentences, how your paper has been organized. The key is the person from whatsoever background, whether he is from business background or he is from uh, uh, technology background, he should be finding uh, reading your introduction of your research paper interesting. And if you follow this particular technique again, five questions, this five uh, 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 MRCIO technique, uh, I can I can uh, vouch for this fact that you will be able to write a very very good introduction. Again, introduction of a research paper should be between around one thousand words or so, uh, and uh, extending to around one and a half pages of length, and that should be. If you answer these five questions, if you answer, uh, if you write the introduction under these five headings, you'll be able to write very, very good introduction. Next remains methodology. And I remember I had done one uh, event in uh, business school, one of the, uh, one such a lecture series only. And I told them that the methodology is simply that uh, whatsoever you have done, the important is if whatsoever experiment you have carried out, whatsoever way you have carried out your research, if the same kind of research is supposed to be carried out in any other part of the world, uh, like we say in Germany or China or wherever it is, the, the, those researchers should not need to contact you that how you have done this thing. So whatsoever you have done, howsoever you have done, everything should be mentioned in methodology, whether it's a scientific technique or whether it's the name of the equipment, whatsoever you use, 
So everything should be highlighted over there. That's what the methodology is all about. So it's tip number five. Tip number six is results and discussion. So it, I always say it's not only important to obtain the results, it is very important to justify those results as well. And the justification of the result will happen in light of what has happened or what research has already been done in that particular field. Very important section, obviously, results and discussion. So justification is very, very important. So just writing this thing, that figure one or graph one uh, provides highlights about this particular data is not good enough. But you need to write why is it so. And when you'll be answering that why, obviously, you will be providing a lot of cross references at, the, at that particular time. It has happened in the past again when I get to see the question, uh, some of the search papers. So they'll be writing the results. They will be simply writing this is increasing, this is decreasing. But why it has happened, they will not be writing. So that must be provided. Without that, uh, the, the, the chances of acceptance of research paper in high quality journals is very, very less. Ordinary journals perhaps will still be accepting, but high quality journals will not be taking chance with these kind of research papers. Then I've told self explanatory and clear graphs crystal clear figure captions yeah and then excuse me clear mention of copyright as a i we encountered this issue and i, I keep on uh, taking this time example time and again that uh, we wrote one review article last year which uh, got accepted and published later in a journal published by iop now iop is a big brand in the name of uh, means uh, the name of journals institute of physics journals and uh, i remember my research students so we because it was a review article so we had taken around 10 uh, around 10 pictures from the different varied uh, sources and um, uh, we took those pictures there was a picture of those sensors and we used those pictures but when it got accepted and when it went to the production and publication stage so they asked us that have uh, from where you have taken these pictures so we told that these are the borrowed figures uh, these are the borrowed pictures because it's a review paper so you use that but then we were compelled rather we were told no you have to obtain the copyright for using all these 10 pictures each and every single picture copyright we had to obtain for those 10 and, and the procedure for taking the copyright is if it is say the paper has appeared initially in a say ieee journal so you need to write to that particular uh, there is a procedure that you need to write to that ieee uh, journal editor that we want to use this figure for particular academic work only and usually they do permit same thing happened with us as out of those 10 figures we got acceptance from nine it means nine uh, for nine figures we got this uh, permission that you can use this figure but for one particular figure we didn't get the permission it means in spite of repeated reminders to the original authors of the paper and the uh, editor of the journal we we wrote that but we didn't get the permission finally i asked my student how important it is to have this figure in the article told no it's important we need to have Finally, I remember I spent money. I spent money. I, whatever cost to that particular figure was attached. So I had to buy that figure and then only I had to transfer that copyright issue to the IOP journal. Then only our paper finally went into production. So using the uh, using the uh, borrowed image in your own article is definitely not a good idea. Good research journals will never allow the publication of uh, uh, that kind of copied work. So uh, we, we, as good researcher, as a responsible researcher, we need to be very, very cautious about that. Tip number seven, there were a lot of questions in that Google form. What is the difference between abstract and conclusion? Abstract, we have already told, there is the five question technique. Conclusion is, see, once you're supposed to write, once a reader has read uh, uh, your research paper, you should write it in about, say, tens and tens of what he has just read. So that's what conclusion is. What the reader has just read, so that is what uh, should be mentioned in the conclusion. Uh, after a uh, conclusion, many times we don't pay much of weight to uh, this particular aspect of a research paper that is writing acknowledgement. So acknowledgement must be written. Means uh, usually we encourage our uh, researchers in the group that is uh, authors are grateful to Chitkara University because Chitkara University has provided us the opportunity for all the infrastructure support. Then in case uh, 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 the, some research students have obtained some fellowship from some government agencies like uh, uh, DST or DBT or AICT or UGC, whatsoever agency, so that agency must be acknowledged. Likewise, I put over here, Dash and Dash are grateful to Dash. Likewise, two students are grateful to say DST for providing the fellowship. And then uh, if, if the work has been carried out as a part of some research project, so then that a research project number and uh, sanctioning agency should also be acknowledged so acknowledgement is important again 
in the research publications which are being done in good uh, journals then source of funding most of the good journals whether it's uh, comes from any of the published like as elsevier or springer or um, uh, say or ieee they will at the time of submission of the article itself they will ask if this research is funded and if it is funded then it must be highlighted over there so and source of funding should be a part of the should the section should be a part of your research manual so the present research work has been carried out as as part of this thing so language can be thought of i just want to highlight and keep it in my slides for you uh coming to tip number 10 so there are different styles for writing references uh, ieee harvard chicago apa uh, but only my, my request and rather guidance where would be whatever style you adopt so that their uniformity should be maintained most of the times many of the journals uh, they do only mention that um, uh, uh, how the references should be mentioned so it should be ideally uh, by the style whatever style is recommended by the journal but whatever style you adopt finally so uh, a uniformity should be maintained it should not so happen that some of the references are as ideally style and some of the references are different style so important information which is supposed to be given in any reference should ask yourself that is the title of the paper name of the authors in which journal is it published which issue what are the page numbers and uh, uh, what is the volume number etc so this is what basic information which has to be mentioned in the references and there are i i, I know there are tools like mendeley and and note which are very very helpful to organize these uh, references i i am not much aware of the use of these tools but then we do have expertise here i i know uh, there was uh, uh, another webinar which was being organized by dr navin sharma dr sn panda student on uses of mendeley tool only but uh, my request here that i would put on record that if some of you are not using these tools mendeley or and note start using them if required we can have another round of webinar as a well on the uh, on the uses of this particular tool only but uh, start using this tool that that these tools really make like very very simple um, when it comes on to uh, uh, arranging the references so okay strong do's uh, the, the article has to be plagiarism free uh, that is as per the ugc guidelines by 31 2018 gadget of india Uh, I have kept a copy of the same in my office, and the uh, in, uh, the same is uploaded on Curian website as well. The plagiarism index should definitely not be more than 10%. That's what uh, our UIN guidelines also say, UGC guidelines also say. Ethics of publishing should be followed strictly. I have already talked about the copyright thing, etc. Aesthetics to be kept in mind. So when you communicate an article, article, so please make sure that when it goes to the reviewer, so it should look at least nice. it should not be that the, there are different kind of fonts which are being used over there so it should look nice and then uh, proper use of line width and legend sector so that those are all related to appearance of the article that when the reviewer lays his hands on the article it should appear to be nice it should look to be nice so that the reviewer finds it interesting to read okay uh, so on a lighter side i always say say well written search papers are like good movie scripts and uh, uh, and if if we get to watch a movie which is uh, where the there where the links are missing suddenly a scene appears which has got no correlation to the earlier scenes then that is not a good movie and so is true for a research paper as well and the best thumb rule best thumb rule which i have learned over uh, my years of experience is that when you write a research paper every single sentence in the research paper should be connected to its preceding and succeeding sentence you do have the liberty to choose only the first sentence after that second sentence should be linked to first sentence third should be linked to second fourth should be linked to third and so on if you follow this approach you will be able to write very very good article and real impactful article okay uh, going to it is 10 is done now 8 plus 8 so these are some of the important websites um, which are, which we should keep on uh, using time and again if somebody is not using schemagojr.com is a very important website provides the h index details of all the journals it is a uh, it is this website data on this website is powered by scopus so very reliable uh, so if somebody is not using this website they should start using there were a lot of questions regarding how to find the right journal at least 20 questions and there are see i i, I usually treat that there are four good publishing houses which together combine uh, publish around almost around 10000 on journals one is elsevier springer taylor and francis and ieee for and every journal every publishing houses has established its website which assists you in finding the right journal for your work like was typically journalfinder.lcvr.com only you are supposed to write the tentative title of your search paper you are supposed to write the abstract of your title paper and then it suggests you 
that these are the journals which are best suited for your this kind of work same kind of services provided by springer also that is general suggester.springer.com uh, so these these links will be sent to you so you can keep on exploring these links time and again similar is the service provided by ITPR, so that is publication recommendeditporg and uh, again you need to give in some keywords and this if, if you if you if on in any corner of your mind it is going on like that i've just mentioned these websites for the sake of mentioning no we use these websites day in day out at times we also get confused we are not sure of that which web where we should communicate this particular kind of work and we take we uh, punch in our uh, title of the paper we punch in the abstract of the paper and then uh, the whatsoever journals the uh, website suggests we communicate our work with them so these are very very handy websites now uh, earlier the four websites which i have told those are all related to engineering but then we because we are a multidisciplinary university this particular website journalguide.com is irrespective of whatsoever background you come from it is like you are supposed to write a manuscript title over here in manuscript abstract irrespective of whatsoever background you come from whether you come from architecture background or mass media background or pharmacy or whatsoever background so it will be able to suggest you the uh, journals of your field uh, then taylor and francis publishes almost around 2800 journals very reputed name 2800 journals in almost every domain so and it's a well accepted and uh, well respected name as well in the case of uh, uh, research publications so this particular website link is there visit this website thing and then rest of the things are self-explanatory uh, many times we do get a request means uh, perhaps people are not familiar with that although scopus remains a paid service but some part some part of the scopus is always available to us i'm very sure on your uh, uh, left side of the screen you can note down scopus.com website if you visit and you establish your account which is free of course you should you would be able to download the uh, list of scopus journals it's on the left side you can download the list of scopus index books you can download uh, which are the journals which have been discontinued from Scopus as well. Because Scopus journal list is a dynamic list. They keep on adding or they keep on removing the journals from the list as well. So it's always a good idea that before you decide to communicate your research work, you can always check it from this list. That the journal which you are targeting finally, whether it is actually indexed in Scopus or not. And this is free. Trust me, this is free. So you should be able to use it very, very easily. And then uh, those 10 tips which I told you earlier for writing good research articles, you might be wondering how did I learn all that? Uh, yes, I learned a lot of things from my experience, but my experience, knowledge acquired from the knowledge got a lot of polish uh, when I started assessing this particular website, which is masterclasses.nature.com. And uh, we have been a regular subscriber of this service since last three years. This is a paid service. We must acknowledge the support coming in from the university. We, uh, university management has uh, agreed to actually subscribe it, uh, pay the cost for the same. It is a very expensive solution. So my request to, as I see, as of now, there are 323 participants. So my message to all 323 uh, attendees, uh, all of you, that please start using this service. It's a very, very effective use. We have, we have used this service for teaching our first year engineering students. And mind you, they, our first year engineering students, an 18 year old kid was able to acquire knowledge that they were able to write good research articles. So it is that handy, very, very useful website. And this has definitely enhanced my knowledge a lot. And if you do spend around 20 to 30 minutes of time, 20 minutes of time on everyday basis, trust me, after two months of time, you'll be much better learned person. And perhaps you, you yourself will be organizing these kind of webinars of organ, um, publishing research papers in high impact journals. Right, so this is all 10 plus 8. Uh, uh, I had planned that I should be able to finish it in 15, 20 minutes, but it's already around 35 minutes I have taken for this. So we'll move on to the uh, discussions time. I would like to involve my panelists now. And uh, the first question to all the, and in the meantime, I would encourage that if the attendees are having any questions, they can keep on writing the questions uh, uh, in the in the uh, questions window, and I would uh, simultaneously keep on having a look at that, and whatever questions uh, will be uh, found interesting or relevant for this particular theme. So those questions also our panelists will be taking. So and the uh, first question uh, which uh, I would be asking everybody, all of our six panelists, and this question um, is 
please explain more on uh, uh, on uh, the oh, sorry the question is what is the most important thing which motivated you to do impactful research so this question i would not read out the name who has asked this question but this question was one of the questions asked in the google form so and the question is what is the most important thing which motivated you to do impactful research and uh, i would request all the panelists to unmute uh, themselves one by one i will take the name and then they can uh, they can take around 30 seconds to answer this particular question and express their views that what motivates them to do impactful research and uh, around 30 seconds and these 30 seconds simultaneously they can um, uh, use to um, tell about their life stories career stories as well so if 30 seconds less 40 seconds of time so i start with uh, uh, say uh, professor harmeet kaur first uh, professor harmeet kaur please unmute yourself and uh, answer to this particular question that what motivated you to uh, do impactful research professor harmeet kaur professor harmeet kaur Okay, uh, we uh, move on to say uh, Dr. Pankaj Kumar. Dr. Pankaj Kumar, if you could unmute yourself and yeah, Dr. Pankaj Kumar, please unmute yourself. Or Janna chahenge ki aap 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 itne aap do bar research award jeete ho best researcher ka aap aap kyu jeete ho aise award? Aap aap ke liye kya motivation hai? Dr. Pankaj Kumar. जी पंकज सर बोलिए देयर वाज सम नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम आई इट इज कमिंग दैट ऑडियो कनेक्शन इज नॉट हां ऑडियो ऑडियो कनेक्शन इज नॉट प्रॉपर सो आई कुड नॉट हियर यू अच्छा कोई बात नहीं सर बोलिए सर अभी क्वेश्चन ये है कि आप दो बार बेस्ट रिसर्चर अवार्ड जीते हो तो आप क्यों जीतते हो ऐसे अवार्ड आपको क्या मजा मिलता है क्या मोटिवेशन है आपका सर मैं अभी आपको रिस्पांस कर रहा हूं वरना आपने सुना क्वेश्चन Okay, 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 okay. Ajay sir, I am sharing sir. Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Very clear, sir. Please go on. Okay, 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 sir. Sir, my motive was very clear, sir. I have to work for excellence, and I yes. used to work for excellence. And yes. every time, I sir, I share karna chahunga sir ki every time, wherever I am going, wherever I am in the bus, I am in the car, I am at my home, and yes. wherever I am going, some research is always going with me, sir. तो मैं Very ये जस्ट ये शेयर ये शेयर सर इधर इसलिए कर रहा हूँ कि मैं ये बताना चाहता हूँ कि लास्ट लास्ट रात मैंने वंदना को कहा कि वंदना जरा कंपाइल करना कि हमारे कितने पेपर हैं टोटल 2016 या जब से हमने शुरू किया है काम इधर तो वंदना ने मुझे लिस्ट रात में भेजी बना के देर आर थर्टी पेपर सर ऑल थर्टी पेपर आर ये मैं, ये मैंने रात ही चेक किया कि ऑल थर्टी पेपर आर एस सी आई लिस्टेड सर फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड सर एक्सलेंट जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट एस Uh, a list of journals is very refined list only uh, uh, high quality research yes, journals only make it to that list so that way uh, 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 all kudos to your research efforts sir dr pankaj kumar so as you rightly said that the research is not a switch which can be means uh, uh, 5 baje ke baad isko hum band kar de so research has to be carried with us and as academicians yes, once we do start publishing a couple of good articles hamare do teen articles hote the then we start really enjoying that thing and then we feel like doing more so we feel like publishing more uh, uh, good quality research papers so I, i i'm sure so that is what the motivation for dr pankaj kumar is dr harmeet aap abhi main dekh pa raha hu aapko please unmute yourself this question ka please can you answer this thing that what motivates you to do impa- more impactful research uh, sir uh, i think uh, nowadays uh, for your professional growth research is an integral part and it is your internal motivation means the uh, external you cannot tell anybody to do the research or get involved in that if you are internally motivated to grow professionally then and you have interest in your in the research or doing some quality work i think automatically the person will start doing something or some quality work in the research Jeez. and uh, starting onwards uh, 
if i talk about my masters i did from aims so one of my teacher was the main uh, person who motivated me to involve get involved in research so our own principal she is a very good researcher and she always motivated us and after that uh, continuously i'm trying my best that uh, i should get involved in more research and uh, by god's grace i'm able to do some work in that area yes, yes. absolutely great absolutely great uh, dr namrata sandhu aap kya kehte ho so what do you say because in business school uh, so you have been doing exceptionally high quality research so what do you say what motivates you to do be a kind of uh, impactful researcher uh, that's right um there are actually more than one reason and uh, the reasons are many but i'll just try to keep it very short uh, so sometime back i designed a course on fraud investigation and before yeah. i designed that course i had written two papers and yeah. i developed a lot of content from the work that i had done and when i took yeah. those papers to the class uh, the impact on the reaction of my students was very 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 positive yeah. so yeah. that has encouraged me to do research in the courses i teach that is one Uh, so second day sometime back i applied for a course in academic teaching to one of uh, the us universities it was an online mm-hmm. course so it mm-hmm. happened before covid and uh, i could not find the application form so i wrote to them and they said that uh, we will send the application form after mm-hmm. you send us your three best publications and if we think that there is mm-hmm. merit in your work we will invite you to apply and mm-hmm. that is when i realized that uh, internationally it is very mm-hmm. very important so so i think Uh, the quality of your teaching is very intricately linked to the quality of the research that you are doing. Correct. Uh, so yes, yes. There was a third thing. I attended mm. uh, the Pan IIM conference the some time mm. back, about two years back, and the keynote speaker, his his entire keynote address was designed out of the research that he had done. So mm. I recently took a course on Coursera. So the entire mm. content, the the, mm. the 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 structures had developed out of the work that they had done. so mm-hmm. i realized that probably and especially for in my field in business we have moved from case based teaching to to research based teaching mm-hmm. so i think uh, it it helps it it improves the quality of my teaching so that is a very very strong motivation for me if finally as we all are teachers and finally whatever knowledge we acquire over the year so that has to go to the classroom and we will be able to perhaps uh, uh, communicate our thoughts better uh, uh, tell our means uh, um, whatever we have learned uh, to our students in a better manner if we engage ourselves in impactful research and moreover as you rightly told that uh, if we if we try to communicate with any of the uh, reputed universities across the world so one thing which they always look forward to is that you share your best three research publications with us yes. at that time we should as academician we should not be in a kind of embarrassing situation Uh, that we 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 feel ashamed to share those publications but we should be rather doing that with a lot of pride so i think that is a good motivation to engage our us in high quality sir uh, uh, uh dr jaitik singh thank you sir up, we are not yes dr jaitik singh we are not able to see you perhaps there is some problem with your camera but please unmute yourself and say 30 seconds please so much to sir to to yes for me it is the environment that motivates uh, you the best so mm-hmm. in my case in particular i was shifted to curin in 2015 and since when i started exploring my potential as a researcher mm. so i owe a lot to the curin and uh, to entire of my mentors over there mm. and uh, this is what keeps uh, me going and subsequently yeah. when you are into uh, some sort of field uh, uh, like choice of uh, research field what i do is i keep referring to gartner hype cycle Mm-hmm. and i select those particular uh, areas of interest which are going mm-hmm. to have some relevance for coming 5 to 10 years correct and correct. because That's... it is going to take almost 2 to 3 years to get a good quality paper published at some reputed uh, platform mm-hmm. so this mm-hmm. is how uh, i manage to uh, keep the ball rolling uh, mm-hmm. with reference to those technologies those areas of research which are actually in demand so this is Very what we keep sure dr jaitik has told us very important uh, particular point uh, see gartner hype cycle i don't know how many of our attendees are aware of the same uh, you could google that is not in the slides but i would make sure that i will add it in the slide when those are sent across to you this is gartner hype cycle which tells us that which are the technologies which are going to prevail in next 10 years of time or so so that is always a very good point to pick up the because there were some questions related to this how do we come to that in which area we should do the research so that that hype cycle is very very important uh, which can be 
uh, uh, used to find out that which research areas are in demand. Uh, Onkar Singh, Onkar Singh, youngest member of the uh, youngest panelist here. Onkar Singh, so you are young, uh, but you managed to win the best researcher award from the pharmacy school. So what motivates you to do high quality research? Why don't you do the ordinary research only and publish research papers in uh, low quality journals? Why, why do you take all that things? Unkar Singh, please unmute yourself. I don't see Unkar Singh over there, but anyhow, see uh, Chef Didar Singh, if you could answer this question. So you are the, uh, you are the odd man out over here, I would say. Odd man out means you are from a field in which everybody says no research can happen, but you are still doing the research. So what, why do you do research? What motivates you to do research? First of all, I really want to thank you for giving this opportunity of sharing my experience. Uh, to begin with, every day uh, I'm actually uh, taking practicals here and theory sessions. Uh, I am actually uh, working with food, uh, developing new recipes, uh, new uh, modifying the recipes. I didn't knew I I am to research uh, in one or the other way, but mm -hmm. I, but here I really want to. Uh, thank and show my gratitude towards dr mansi chitkara actually she pushed mm. me and guided me to involvement to research and uh, she gave me the chance to get into the uh, practical research first and then uh, we actually came up with one of the ideas everybody knows in chitkara of the energy bar mm. the, with, that was the, just just the start of that and uh, that is how i get, get to know that Food is not just uh, related to hospitality only, but uh, it, it, there are various sciences that are involved in food, and we need to get into research to know about them. What is Chef? Chef, Tijar, tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. Sorry to uh, interrupt you, but tell me one thing. You do have a couple of publications, I guess three to four publications already to your credit, which are in reasonably good journals. So after, what were your initial impression when you had not got any research paper? Did you find research, doing research, very difficult thing? Like we are mounting a mountain. And how do you feel now when you already do have some research papers to each other? 30 seconds in the interest of time. Yes, yes sir. Uh, in this case, uh, everybody, not me, but everybody is, uh, everybody thinks that research is not easy. But if mm -hmm. you, uh, if you on a daily basis, start reading uh, new papers, get, getting into uh, knowing various domains, Mm -hmm. other than yours you will mm -hmm. start liking it you yes. you like what research is and mm -hmm. you get to know more of the knowledge by doing research mm -hmm. if you're sitting in a bubble yeah. and saying that this is only the house i have or this is the yes. planet all that i have to have, have that is not yes. the answer you need to be, yeah. get out of that bubble and explore mm -hmm. yes. explore the world. Very good, very good, very inspiring chef Tida. so onkar i am able to see onkar bedi as well onkar bedi so I had asked this question earlier as well, you are not there. But uh, then why why do you do good research? Why don't you get satisfied by public, publishing your research work in ordinary journals? What motivates you to do, publish research work in uh, high quality journals only? Uh, thank you, sir, for giving us a beautiful chance or wonderful chance to interact with the, all the members of the Kara family. And uh, the thing which uh, gave me a motivation regarding the best uh, work uh, perceived in the uh, field of research is that uh, that I want to channelize my energy in a very good way. And uh, the, I think this is our only way that I am channelizing my energy in a, a good way that is concerned with the uh, good uh, publication in, a, in concern with the quality, not with the quantity of the paper. And another thing is that the passion that I learn from my guides, that uh, my gurus and my teachers and my mentors, that uh, they always guide me, that I always go for the good public publicity, not for the quantity, always concerned with the quality of the paper, that what type of quality, they say, patch index, ki baat karte ho, impact factor journals, because a lot of predators journals are there. So again, mm -hmm. If we are publishing our predator journal, uh, we are uh, already we are downing, uh, we are decreasing our quantity or uh, decreasing our quality of the uh, research style. Uh, that what we are seeing uh, further or in the future, we are going to do. So always okay. focus on the quality, not on the quantity. Mm. So that's good. So the, the training matters a lot, means basically what you learn from your guru, 
what you learn from your guide maybe that really uh, matters a lot this, uh, so I, I guess so the, the the roots are laid then then and there itself okay uh, i do have another question from uh, again asked in the google form and i would i would request professor pankaj and professor jaitek to take these questions but what are the three most desirable qualities and habits of a researcher uh, professor pankaj first so what are the three most desirable qualities and habits of a researcher professor pankaj aapne kuch bata diya thoda sa aur batao ji kaun si ji sir kya kya habits honi chahiye ek researcher ki ji sir yes dr pankaj sir due to some old nahi nahi sir we are able to listen to you please go on ha ji sir can i hear now yes 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 please go on sir oh is habit sir sir read good paper always read good quality papers only very good that is the first point good quality paper yes yes sir must be updated sir yes a researcher must be, must be updated yes read good quality papers yes. must be updated very good and, and third the research is area this say again dr pankaj third one i would like to say that uh, Every time, if you are a researcher, you will carry some research paper with you wherever you are going. You have in your bag, you have in your hand. So every time, wherever you get the time, you must read that paper. Paper very for manuscripts. So keep on reading, and it's very important to read the research papers from good journals. Dr. Pankaj has made a very point, and good is not subjective here. Good is very very objective. Good means research papers published in high quality journals. Good H index papers. So not if the learning itself will not be good, or learning is from the wrong sources, then ultimately the product which will be able to prepare in the form of our research paper that will also be kind of ordinary research paper only. Very important. Very good, Dr. Pankaj. Dr. Jayateg, आप इसके बारे में क्या कहना चाहेंगे? What would like to say? Good, three habits of a good researcher. Uh, there are uh, only three which I actually practice. first and okay. foremost is consistency of effort that okay. uh, you cannot make uh, anything perfect in the very first attempt you need very to good. keep trying trying and trying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and second thing is before writing anything before uh, referring to any study which has already been published and being followed what i do is i try to execute the given or published case study on my own mm -hmm. and uh, when i am equipped with the experience of executing the study which has already been published then i am very much aware of the probable pros and cons associated with that particular experimentation mm -hmm. and uh, that helps me to make sure that i should come up with something very concluding and appealing very good uh, for very good. and yes, third so thing is you should very keep important. discussing you should mm. keep discussing uh, with your peers in my mm. case i am fortunate to uh, travel with pankaj sir quite often mm -hmm. uh, i keep on discussing with him mm -hmm. many a times um, he is kind enough to proofread my uh, uh, manuscript also though he is very not from my uh, domain but uh, this is how uh, i am grateful to him for sure. very good very so consistency is very important another thing which dr jaitek shared that start traveling and, with a good researcher maybe start and last but not the least start talking to last a, but not last but not the least uh, i happen to get few key uh, advices from dr rajneesh sharma as well oh, though nice, uh, he keeps sharing on his email also but if someone can make uh, go through those very emails those are self explanatory and when uh, those really matter a lot if you can follow those uh most of the restrictions could be uh, handled automatically uh, while you are trying to publish anything out of and so just jokes jo just like jokes in there, there is the show that is the the kapil sharma show that right, where there is something good said about kapil so he says that we will will play this line three number of times the so same way if there would have been a provision maybe we would have played this particular line at least five number of times that's what i would have said when you have appreciated my effort 
and you thank you so much for jokes apart we we'll come back to the main business here uh, uh, there is another question uh, which i would uh, request professor namrata to answer professor namrata you can unmute yourself and listen the question very carefully uh, how we can increase the citation of our research or review article is there any option or any secret to put some extra aspect so that the article will becomes extraordinary uh, professor namrata if you could unmute yourself and this about increasing the citation of a review article how is it possible so what should be done uh, how, yeah so sir to uh, start with the uh, uh, review articles uh, tend to be typically they tend to be cited more than uh, mm -hmm. any other kind of an article and mm -hmm. uh, so what i did was i went on google scholar and i dug out the list of the most cited articles and interestingly mm. it out of the top eight most cited articles were review articles mm. but uh, going beyond this uh, how can we increase the citation uh, sir i do have uh, just two or three three tips here uh, mm. sir uh, it's very very important for us to have a short a descriptive title which contains mm. keywords mm -hmm. Correct. A very clear, a very clear descriptive abstract which contains keywords. Once again, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a good practice to use synonyms for keywords, use full forms. For example, CSR and corporate social responsibility, uh, mm -hmm. country-specific keywords. So the so the so so that that is something else that we should keep in mind. For example, we should say a real estate market and not mm -hmm. property market because that is something which is very specific to our country. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, sir, if we Google. Mm -hmm. uh and uh, any any research article typically what comes up is the title and the first or the second sentence of the research paper so it is Correct. very important that it's very important that we use keywords in the first one or two sentences of our mm -hmm. of our of our abstract uh, so you are trying that, to talk of something related to person sorry to interrupt you something like related to search engine optimization as well that the keywords yes, which you choose for a search paper should be such which which are indexed more so that the researchers or your peers are able to find your article more easily so that may help in yes, increasing sir. the citations of your article very important yes, point sir. you have made professor uh, yes. and 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 sir another important thing is uh, the titles they are the most read part of our research paper and when we yes. read it when 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 a, when a prospective researcher reads the title that is when he or she decides whether that paper is appropriate for him or not so i am hmm. going to share some examples of three titles recommended by embroiled journals so these are the most outstanding titles i'm just going to read it out to them and he's going to okay. read it out to the participants here the first one is a framework for transportation decision making in an integrated supply chain the second one is the organizational change and development the efficacy of transformational leadership and training The third one is consumer perception of organic food production and farm animal welfare. Now, mm -hmm. uh, the the editors of Embroiled Journals they recommend these titles because they say that these titles these titles can make sense as sentences. They introduce mm -hmm. the content of the article and they contain the main words and phrases that the mm -hmm. reader will use to search for articles on these topics. So, right. good titles, short, descriptive, mm -hmm. with keywords. abstract with keywords and first or second sentence should definitely have three or four keywords but having said yeah. that so google can google can it can detect abuse of keywords so it is mm -hmm. recommended that we write naturally and we do not spoil the integrity of our work by using these keywords too many so times that, that 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 was tip number 1 in the my presentation about writing a good title yes. so, and that's what yes. exactly it's yes. very good that you could explain it in more detail that is a b c yes. and d e f of writing a title so if you if one keeps that in mind so they are able to write a good title and the article stand better chances of getting cited as well very good professor uh, yes, uh, professor namrata my next question is to uh, professor harmeet and uh, she she is the one who would be the best person to answer this question i am sure this question must have been asked by some student only what is the procedure to get post doc fellowship and how research publications play a role over there Yeah. Uh, Professor Meet Kaur, if you could unmute yourself and answer this question, what is the procedure to uh, uh, get postdoc fellowship, and what is the role of uh, having good publications over there? Must yeah. be asked by a PhD student. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah yes uh, first thing i would like to say that uh, whosoever uh, has the aim to go for pdf they have to be very fast after their phd because the eligibility criteria for pdf is mostly 3 to 5 years with the, means after they complete the phd within 5 years or 3 years uh, they can go for pdf and usually after that uh, uh, we don't get the chance to go for the pdf another thing is uh, uh, the way to get the pdf in india and abroad is little different like in india you will see that majority of the organizations for example icssr icmr uh, they call and even dhr dst they call for the pdfs mm -hmm. and you can apply for that and you you if you get the chance to do the pdf then you have to search uh, a guide who uh, who is working in your own expert area and where you can work with him and once you get the consent then you can apply for that and and another thing is in india you will be getting the stipend for the pdf mm. but if i'm talking about abroad then you have to keep on searching uh, mm. in different universities in your field that when they are calling for the uh, post doctoral fellowships and if you see that the call uh, uh, the area for which the call is made it is as per your discipline and uh, you are interested in that you can apply for that and another uh, thing is that once you are applying abroad mostly it is funded or you might be getting a tenure track uh, positions also which is really uh, which can uh, really be good for you uh, the yeah. postdoc which i have gone for that was through an organization international organization and where i got the funding for 3 months and uh, it was really a useful experience yes. uh, it depends upon you whether you want to come back to india and then you want to get back to your uh, country or you want to stay there only in their uh, tenure track positions so you have to But keep go, going for P, a post doctorate really gives a lot of edge to your researcher because the kind of training or the kind of exposure which you get to uh, uh, get during your uh, post doctorate that really makes a lot of uh, a uh, lot of difference so all phd students should aspire to go for post doctorate and having good impactful research publications is a very very key requirement for uh, getting a post doctorate you are very uh, right sir second question which you have asked that you have to have a very good research base hmm. to get the phd hmm. yeah yes thank you so much professor amit uh, for uh, the whole audience it is 2 minutes past 4 uh, but i do have lot of other questions as well so we'll go maybe for 10 more minutes and uh, i'm sure uh, the audience might be finding the contents of the webinar very very relevant so i promise uh, uh, another say it is 2 minutes past 4 so we by 4 15 pm so we uh, say let us just extend it this webinar by another 15 another 12 to 30 minutes up to 4 15 pm so my next question to uh, is uh, is to chef didar and this question must have been asked by some faculty from the fine arts department the question is chef didar please unmute yourself listen to the question very carefully that yes, in sir. our subjects in bracket it has written fine arts most of the research are basically case studies so there are very less chances of publication in high impact journals kindly suggest us some ways of improvement so chef didar so you must be able to relate yourself to this particular problem so yes, sir. that is why has this question i have asked you only yes so sir. how how to uh, answer that and the question is the case studies uh, do not get placed in the journals mm -hmm. uh, maybe journal publishing uh, mm -hmm. actually from my thinking it is not true mm -hmm. they get published and uh, mm -hmm. the thing is the main thing uh, what i can suggest a uh, few tips are first of all uh, actually uh, the thing is we don't know everything about anything hame sab kuch nahi pata har cheez bare so we need to find the gap mm -hmm. agar aapka gap clear hoga that mm -hmm. uh, aapke research ka topic clear hoga on what, mm -hmm. what you are working with, working on and mm -hmm. it is new it will definitely mm -hmm. get published and mm -hmm. secondly try so making it the research question particular research gap or research question is very important that yes, through sir. your research which research gap you are trying to plug in basically so if you are able to find it that research definitely uh, is worth of publishing very yes, important sir. point i have made sure that yes uh, there is one more thing that i would like to add sir uh, yes, that is there is uh, nothing called top most journal for uh, 
every domain for example yes. i would give a reference that if we are talking about journals from applied science they are mm -hmm. having exceptionally high impact factor they are having exceptionally high h index but right. if we are talking about journals from a particular domain for let us say for, uh, from from um, uh, computer science or from medical science or from uh, uh, any other uh, domain so mm -hmm. the journal might not be having much high h index or impact factor but uh, you can think of uh, a um, journal as a quality journal if it is indexed in uh, quality uh, indexing services for example uh, scopus sci ssci or uh, which one is relevant uh, to the concern so correct. one should keep exploring it yes 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 so h index and impact factor is not everything so that's the point which i'm very sure we as a panel would like to make it is uh, see h index increases with the age of the journal as well so the 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 journal which is having the highest h index in the history of journal that is nature and to the, my, uh, the last uh, h index value of our journal which i knew that was 1096 which meant that 1096 articles published in that journal have been cited 1096 or more number of times but that journal started publishing in 1869 when mahatma gandhi ji was born so almost 150 years plus so h index increases as the journal gets old there might be some very good journals which might be new which might have started their operations only say four or five years back their h index might be less maybe five or ten only but then those might be impactful journals their impact factor might be high so impact factor value if it is for a journal event is one as well that journal is good so that journal can also be targeted so chef Tidar, so you wanted to say that it's not so that the case studies can't be published so if you're through your case studies, if you're able to identify exactly that what is a research gap which you are trying to plug in so that research study also should get published so i take that message from you and uh, go to yes chef Zar, you want to say something just one minute sir for yes. 30 seconds okay, yes, sir, i have to say a few words on fine arts uh, uh, actually sir i want to say to fine arts researchers please go through the, the these high impact journals from your particular area or particular subjects and try to search what type of contents they are publishing mm -hmm. to create that type of content if they have some high impact journals in their Very particular good. area yes 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 chef did that so next uh, 10 seconds for you to answer this question fast yes sir uh, the next point was genuine by dr pankaj but i really want mm -hmm. to add is uh, the suggestion or the tips is second tip is they can even collaborate with different departments or domains just to Correct. get the paper the quality of the paper uh, to increase Correct. the quality of the paper to get it yes. published in very impactful journal very very important point likewise you are you uh, uh, collaborated with dr Mansi chitrara's research group and you were able yes. to understand start appreciating the research and that is how you fell in love with research as well so message yes. to researchers from fine arts department is why don't you join hands with the engineering researchers we need research from humanity everywhere we need people from humanities department arts department everywhere i'm very sure engineers also need them so please try to collaborate with them you will start falling in research with in love with research okay uh, so that's the kind of time which we had for uh, chef Dizar for your this question the next question to you is onkar bedi uh, and uh, uh, the question is how can we find that the research gap found in one paper has been filled yet or not Unkar Bidhi, please unmute yourself. Again, I'm sure this question must have been asked some young researcher only. Where uh, yes, sir. To find out that how one can find sir, out. Regarding, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, so, question is concerned with the research gap that how we can find out the research gap uh, yes. in already published paper. That I want yes. to share one story uh, in concern with the my paper that uh, we have recently published. Only one minute. Uh, only one minute for story. Yes. We are publishing a paper in OECD uh, concerned with acute toxicity studies. Right. Uh, in this paper, uh, our gap is that we have not worked on the multiple doses regimens. So mm -hmm. uh, the concept is that if we want to find it out, the research gaps concerned with the already uh, already published work then we have to uh, concern with the technicality of the paper that uh, which type of parameters they have assessed in the uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the objective section and what type of material and method they have concerned agar hume right. material method ka pata chal jayega aur kaun kaun se parameters unhone nahi considered kiye that become a gap 
that which type of uh, parameters they are not assessing and that become a very good challenge for us to accept our new things uh, to generate and to create a new things uh, in the upcoming or over uh, in the continuity of that particular work hmm. correct correct absolutely absolutely great so research gap for finding the research gap more of studies have to be done good literature survey has to be done and then keep on talking to your respective yes. guide, your supervisor that really helps that whether particular research gap has already been plugged in or not very good dr Unkar. literature uh, survey even though reading habits see uh, yes. there is another very important point that as uh, when we publish research papers uh, we all face rejections we all face rejections in terms of uh, rejection of our research papers so uh, i would like to ask this question dr jaytek singh uh, that if a paper gets rejected, how one should take it and how one should come out of that situation so that still the paper gets accepted or what do you do usually when your paper gets rejected? Sir, I will just like to uh, yeah, Dr. Before Dr. Jaitay yes. gives his answer. There are a lot of questions in the questions window, Dr. Rajni Sharma. You may yes. like to answer them, although I know you don't have time. Just wanted yeah. to draw your attention to those questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can I would just I would have a look at that. Thank you, Arsana, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Jayatek Singh, first answer this question, then we'll take uh, some of the questions from the answer uh, this question window as well. So how do you handle the situation when your paper gets rejected? Rather, honestly speaking, the rejection itself is going to tell you the reason of rejection. So, if you would mm. take it on a positive note, you can simply mm. revise it and send it mm -hmm. to a better place. So I happened okay. to uh, experience this very recently. There was a manuscript. It got rejected by almost every journal. Few of the journals rejected it at uh, um, the editor editorial desk only. But subsequently, mm -hmm. we keep on adding it. We keep on enhancing it. And ultimately, it got published at, uh, at a journal of visual uh, computation and mm -hmm. having a two impact factor and 53 H index. So and even in a bad journal. So when a paper Besides. gets rejected, you get definitely some comments from the reviewers. And if you exactly. keep on incorporating those comments, that keeps on automatically enhancing the quality of your paper. And there is quite an op there is quite a chance that that paper may get accepted even a, in a general with even a higher impact factor. Very Besides. good. So, so next we'll go on to the questions from the questions window only. So somebody has asked, will I get the certificate at the end and the webinar content, PowerPoint and recording? Yes, PowerPoint you will get. No certificates for the same. Recording, I am not sure. I need to talk to IT department whether we have recorded this webinar or not. But if it would have been recorded, then definitely we'll make it available. At you will get the recording. Uh, it gets yeah. automatically recorded and people can look at it. Yes, yes. So oh, it will, uh, Dr. Asna told. So she is, she is the one who is hand-holding me or driving me for this webinar today. Thank you so much, Dr. Asna, for your support. Okay, so somebody says kindly share the PPT. Definitely we'll do that. Somebody says, very helpful, sir. Great tips and references. Okay, waiting for a name. Right. Thank you so much. That is okay. Uh, Dr. Mohit Kapoor says, what it takes for assistant professor to get over the quantity to quality in research paper? What it takes for an assistant professor to get over the quantity to quality in research paper? So who would like to take this question? Dr. Pankaj, would you like to take this question? What it takes for an assistant professor to get over the quantity to quality? So, uh, quantity to quality in research paper. Yeah, it's a relevant question. Very good question, Dr. Mohit. Sir, please repeat again. He says, What it takes for an assistant professor as a young person to get over the quantity to quality in a research paper means well, he should not bother about quantity but quality. Okay, he should overcome this. Difficult. Is this a difficult question? Dr. Harmeet, she is the dean. So maybe Dr. Harmeet may be able to answer this question more precisely. Dr. Harmeet, if you would like to try. Uh, sir, in my opinion, uh, always we should go for quality papers. If you yes. are publishing even a one quality paper in a good journal, then it is better than getting three or four papers within five or six months in a mediocre or in a uh, below average journal that will not give you any any kind of so in my opinion you should go for the quality but yes if for your professional growth or uh, in your organization for your APS course to get promoted to associate professor or to the professor you need some points then that you have to take care but that also is based upon the impact factors if the, yeah, if your, 
uh, yeah, ultimately, Professor Smith, I feel like it's all about balance between the two things, quantity and quality. The, uh, so one needs to learn over the years of experience that how the balance has to be maintained. That's Sir, I would like to add something uh, to it. Quality is is of time now. I think we no, should no, wind I, up. I would... yes. Just, yes. just one minute, less than yes. one uh, minute. Yes. Quality is something which is subjective. And yeah. in my opinion, genuinity is the best quality one should uh, try to acquire. And yes. if one is going to pub, try trying to publish uh, any of the manuscript at any reputed platform in the very first go, then that is uh, the chances are very bleak or uh, minute for it. So mm -hmm. we are having nine journals published by Chitkara University Punjab itself. Mm -hmm. So those who are at the beginnings at the uh, beginning stage of uh, their research experience or career, they can try to send publications. Uh, submit publications to Chitkara journals only and I'm right. very much sure I am a part of uh, uh, editorial board of journal of uh, today's ideas to, uh, and tomorrow's technologies uh, where Dr. Uh, uh, Sharma is the editor for that and I am very much sure that the sort of reviews uh, the authors would get those would help them a lot to enhance the quality so that the next publication they are going to do that is for sure be ready for any scopus or any uh, other highly reputed uh, journal yeah thank you so much dr jaitik for bringing it out yeah as dr jaitik told that chitkara university also publishes nine journals and trust me for that all those nine journals maintain a very high quality so the first review that you can always obtain from the in-house journals as well very good so somebody has asked this question and i will treat it as the last question of this webinar that's magu jr sometimes doesn't show the particular journal but in the scopus list it is there why there is a discrepancy see uh, uh schemago data is basically old data it is powered by scopus but scopus doesn't give them the latest data schemago data is two years old as of now if you visit website it will show that it is the data is updated up to 2018 year only so scopus website is latest so that is why there might be some difference at times schemago will show that this journal is indexed in scopus but actually it might have been removed and vice versa as well okay i think that's the time which we had for this webinar it's already uh, 4 16 pm thank you so much for your time we had at some point of time we had almost around 320 plus attendees as well I'm sure uh, uh, some part of or more part of this webinar would definitely have made some impact on your uh, research. Thank you so much for attending this. And we all are available for any kind of further feedbacks, further suggestions. If you need our help at any stage of time, you are more than welcome to approach us. Don't hesitate. We are, all, we are at Chikara, we are a family and it is our duty to help each other. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, as Dr. Chitkara says. Thank you so much for attending this webinar. And thank you so much, Dr. Archer and all panelists. Thank you so much for their time. Thank you.